Hello, I'm Dan Dubnow. This video presents the latest advances in information technology from the Open Geospatial Consortium, or OGC. OGC is leading the development of standards for geospatial and location-based services. Quality information about where and when is required for most critical decisions. Information technology standards are vital for fast access to digital maps, earth images, and many other kinds of geospatial information involving addresses, regions, routes, and camera views. We'll be looking at new ways to get all these different kinds of information to work together. In a dramatic live simulation held in December 2006, you'll see how OGC interoperable services radically enhance the capabilities of disaster managers. In the demonstration's fictional scenario, a dirty bomb explodes in a major seaport. While the situation on the ground is chaotic, we'll see how OGC services bring an informed awareness to the disaster managers and first responders who risk their lives to save lives. As the demo scenario begins, a web-connected, always-on radiological sensor located in the port sends an automatic alert, including sensor locations, to the emergency operations center. There, an officer receives the alert and begins to investigate, even before receiving a 911 call. Officer Floyd uses the location from the sensor alert service to discover data on the web about the vicinity around the sensor. Finding a surveillance camera in the sensor web, he points the camera toward the sensor and surveys the damage from the explosion. Then he contacts other agencies. The radiological sensor alert has automatically invoked a chain of OGC web services that together create a plume model showing the likely spread of the airborne radioactive contaminants. Officer Floyd checks downwind sensors, finds recent high-resolution imagery, and builds a weather view from Doppler radar and GOES satellite data. Drawing on many sources of online information, Officer Floyd sends an OGC context document of the map views and the data layers to officers in the center, as well as local, state, regional, and national agencies at other locations. Working with Officer Floyd, Center Director Poole determines that, based on the extent of the radiological release and the number of potential victims, a variety of resources will be necessary for rapid and coordinated efforts to treat casualties and protect the health of citizens in the surrounding communities. The situation calls for a temporary hospital with a decontamination unit as well as helicopter access. The emerging common operational picture allows the director and an Army construction analyst to begin identifying potential locations that can handle the anticipated volume of patients. To perform a more detailed analysis of imagery to locate an appropriate building, the analyst utilizes the OGC web coverage service enhanced with image streaming capability. Potential buildings for the temporary hospital are found at an airport beyond the radiation plume. The analyst, Officer Bowman, begins site assessment with spatial integration of building models with information on the surrounding location. Several buildings are reviewed for suitability based in part on the space available. The building that can best support a field hospital is selected. Standards for building information models and industry foundation classes make it possible to quickly import designs for building components, such as a temporary operating room. Officer Bowman creates a preliminary design for the hospital and shares it with the construction team. A detailed design of the temporary hospital is quickly determined and distributed via the web. The heliport and hospital will also require temporary modification to taxiways and flight paths at the airport. Geospatial digital rights management is used to ensure only authorized managers are allowed to alter the official information. 
access is allowed, and feature updates as well as data quality checks are performed without delay. These changes are posted and temporary notifications are sent to pilots. The airport is rapidly turned into a temporary hospital and patients are transported from the bomb site, in some cases via helicopter. Sometime later, Officer Floyd reviews the tracking of patients, checking locations against triage priority codes. Data from an OGC patient tracking server is displayed on a map. A patient currently en route will place the field hospital at capacity. Therefore, it is decided to divert subsequent Code 1 patients to a different hospital. You have just witnessed the critical importance of open standards in emergency management. This rapid web-based discovery, access and processing of geospatial information is relatively new. Today, many different systems work together to open standards to make this possible. The OGC Web Services Phase 4, or OWS4 testbed, was a part of OGC's process to develop and promote the use of OpenGIS standards. Results of OWS4 include specifications and implementations that were used in realistic scenarios to achieve interoperability. Interoperability allows digital systems to plug and play so they can rapidly share, integrate, and apply information. OGC develops open standards for any geospatial application. The scenario you have seen is just one of them. Several additional demonstrations are available on the OWS4 DVD and via the web. The Earth observation demo occurs during hurricane season in the eastern United States. Weather forecasters and disaster response officials use meteorological models to estimate location and time of landfall impact. A SPOT satellite and NASA's EO-1 satellite were tasked during OWS-4 to collect new images of the area after hurricane impact. Images were processed to identify flooded areas. OGC's web services and sensor web enablement standards afford a quick and agile response to assess flooding resulting from a hurricane. OGC's Geography Markup Language, or GML, is a powerful, robust XML-based language for transferring geospatial data. During OWS4, an open-source GML viewer client application was developed and can be used to display critical geospatial content. These and other innovations are results of OGC's interoperability program. The lesson of the OGC testbed activity is that you can develop lasting, profound technology solutions in real time. What we're doing is facilitating uh, a common picture of reality for different organizations which have different views of the reality, the disaster, the emergency, the catastrophe that they all have to deal with collectively. The efforts of OGC over the last several years to develop Geospatial content in an open architecture is of paramount importance to the Port Authority in that we are a bi-state agency. We span New York City, New York State, and New Jersey State, each of which has their own standards and how they apply geospatial content. Currently, there's a, a multitude of legacy sensors that have been fielded over the last 20, 30 years with the various standards of connectivity and the ability to bring these sensors into a common platform and to share these sensors seamlessly across operators and up to decision makers is unavailable to us. Using the web services, you're able to process data rather than create it um, and then add value and then someone else picks it up. Very exciting. Here we have a great example of 3D geometry in space easily queried by any number of tools instantly in the context of this landscape uh, and all the other things that are going on. The OGC has responded really well to the multilingual requirement. It was implemented quickly and easily and it's already making its way through the specification program. Greatest limitation in sharing data relates back to ownership. 
who owns the data, who can change the data, and how do you manage that process through policy. Absent technology in digital rights management, particularly for geo data sets, uh, it, it really minimizes the willingness of the partners to share their data. The OGC suite of standards allows us to get away from the issue of uh, building stovepipe uh, vendor-specific solutions and drives us to an a, uh, area where we can address our requirements through commercial off-the-shelf software that is built to a particular standard, in, in this case uh, the OGC suite of standards. We're very much a supporter of the OGC uh, interoperability program. It really provides us with an opportunity to set our requirements out there in the community. When you have standards and you have a thoroughly rationalized procurement process, you save the taxpayer, the investor, and then ultimately the, uh, the, the citizen uh, a lot of money and a lot uh, of, of, uh, of pain. Interoperability seems to be about the integration of information. What it's really about is the coordination of organizational behavior. Interoperability is created by organizations working together to define more efficient methods for critical missions. OGC develops standards based on scenarios and requirements from the work of people who use or could use geospatial technologies. If your organization or discipline has a need that could be met by geospatial information standards, OGC is where you'll want to begin.